Oh. Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. Just raise your hands right now. Lift up your hands. Come on. Let's worship him. The King of Glory is here. You know what we need to learn? We need to learn how not to miss the moment. That sacred moment where transformation is at. As I was sitting down, the Lord said, tell the people that there are those here tonight that are running from their Esau. And he said to tell the people, it's time to cross the Ford Jabbok and begin to enter into the night to wrestle with the angel. He said, tell the people that as they begin to wrestle, I will begin to wrestle the issues out of their heart. And bring you to the place 
you say, I will not let you go until you bless me. I believe that this conference is going to be a time of the night, but it's going to be up to you whether you wrestle with the angel and whether transformation is going to take place. You're listening. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Amen. The presence of the Lord. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, worship team. Woo. I don't know about you, but I could feel it. I could cut it with a knife tonight. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I just want to welcome everybody here tonight as we kick this meeting off here Wednesday night. God is doing some incredible things. As my apostle said, he's already done it. The problem is it hasn't manifested in the natural. And it's time that we learn to pull from the heavenly realm what's already done and bring it into the earth, into the natural realm. Yeah, I understand it's already done, but can you see it manifest? Can you see it come, amen, into fruition? Can you see it? Because I'm telling you what God wants to do in this hour, it's going to take some spiritual eyes because we walk by faith and not by sight. you got to see in the realm of the spirit to get this thing manifested. Open my eyes, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I just want to welcome all. Thank you, Senior Council. I honor you today. Any minister here today, we honor you today. Amen. We honor you. And I just want to honor my wife. Amen. Who has stood behind me. In a couple of weeks, we're going to celebrate our 30th. Say 30. Hallelujah. Married, amen, for 30 years to the same woman. Yes, hallelujah. Wonderful, wonderful, amen. I mean, you know, when things are clicking in your marriage, man, it's, it's, it's an amazing thing. Well, it's quiet in here. I don't know, man. There may be some not amazing things happening in our marriages tonight. Hallelujah. God's going to touch your marriage, too. Amen. He's going to touch your bear. He's going to teach you how to be a husband and how to be a wife. Amen. How to love each other. Glory be to God. All right. I'm not going there. The theme tonight is a corporate oneness. And you know, it's incredible because I, I've been in meditation for the past three weeks to a, to a month. And every time I go to put some notes together, it just never came together. I just summary I just couldn't put so listen I'm not I'm not preaching tonight out of notes I'm preaching out of my meditation amen in my time that I've spent with the Lord I'm gonna I'm gonna minister and tonight I'm gonna I'm gonna hit Exodus chapter 30 is gonna be our context oh yeah because we're talking about a corporate oneness amen what it means to be corporate and one I don't think we understand what it means to be one. I don't under I don't think we understand what unity truly means. Because unity does bring us into oneness, but we must understand in John 17 twice, two times, say two times. Two times Jesus prays. In John 17, he said that they may be one. As you and I are one. <laughs> so let me tell you something. He said that they may be one. Can I tell you something? Being one with him, the father. Come on, somebody. Are you listening to it? Is a process that you must come into of development and maturity and a spiritual understanding of a revelation of how God created you in his image and likeness. Y'all listening. So what does it mean to be one with the Father? When we look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, he said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. But when he said, let us make man, let us, who's us? That word us is translated 
Elohim. And Elohim means more than one, not singular. Amen. But plural, more than one. So when God spoke, when the Father spoke, He said, let us, Son and the Holy Ghost, create man in our image and likeness. So if we're going to talk about oneness, Apostle Eddie, we got to go back to the very beginning to understand what oneness truly means. You want to know what oneness means? It means the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost is moving in the earth. He created Adam, Apostle Don, in his image and likeness. Can I tell you something? Adam was created through the righteousness of God. And you know what righteousness is? It's God's complete perfection for your life. Adam didn't have a sin problem, amen, because he was completely whole. He was made one. When God breathed into Adam, when he breathed into his nostrils, the breath of life, he became an animated creature. Come on, somebody. And he began to live in a idea or understanding called oneness. Somebody say oneness. So if we're going to talk about oneness, we must talk about the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Now, what happened with Adam? He was whole. He didn't have a flesh problem. He didn't have a carnal mind problem. Because we know what the scripture says. To be carnally minded is what? What is it? He had the mind of his father. And watch this. God created him in a three-part being. Body, soul, and spirit. So can I tell you that in the very beginning, when God created Adam in his image and likeness, he created him just like a representation of heaven was a representation of the earth. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And Adam was body, soul, and spirit. Hello, somebody. The three were one, and they were complete, and they were whole. Until Adam, what? He fell. And he lost oneness. And he was trampled into uh, uh, the fall, amen, of a sin nature where he no longer had the mind of God. Now he's living a life dictated by the flesh. And so guess what? God put Adam in the Garden of Eden. And he had to be expelled. We're going to talk about being expelled or exiled in a minute. He had to be expelled from the garden. Why? Because he can no longer he was no longer living in a place called oneness. Y'all listening. We see the prayer, we call it the Lord's prayer in Matthew chapter 6 and that's not the Lord's prayer. That was the prayer. He said pray after this manner in Matthew chapter 6. That was the prayer of the disciples. He said, pray this, our Father, hello, somebody, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. I need to get my timer, sorry. We do that on purpose. I kind of have an idea. Where was I? Matthew chapter 6. The prayer of the disciples. Now, now watch this. Watch this. He says, our, our Father who art in heaven, holy is your name. Amen. Because listen, our relationship to the God, to, to our Father is holy. It is holy. It is sacred. It, it, is, it is the Father's intention that he brings us all back into a place called oneness where, it, where, where we're in relationship with him. Am I making sense? He says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So our prayer has now changed that our prayer is our relationship to the Father, but it's the Father's intention to give you his kingdom. So he says, listen, this is the prayer that every single one of us should be praying in our daily prayer life, and that's that the kingdom of God would manifest in the earth. That his will be done. Then how many of you know that the will of the Father is for you to transform, to change, that you would be an agent of change, and that you would display the kingdom of God and manifest it in the earth? So 
So your prayer, come on somebody, is about the kingdom of God and his will. See, if I change my understanding that I'm not trying to build my ministry, but I'm trying to establish the kingdom, it says that the bread from heaven or revelation will begin to be dispelled at my disposal. It's, it's, it, he's going he's to download and give me revelation for me and what I need to do in my life. It's called the bread of life. It's sustenance. It's, it's blessed are those that hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. And how many of you know that there's a diet called righteousness? Come on, somebody. Amen. There's bread. There's revelation in heaven that we must tap into, that we must pull from. And what unlocks that is our prayer, Lord, how is your kingdom going to come and manifest? Show me. Get you, you gave Peter the keys to the kingdom, which is what all of us have. How do we use these keys to unlock the kingdom in different realms of glory that we must enter into? Hello, somebody. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Then the prayer that Jesus prayed. Now watch this. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, ever making intercession for the saints. What is he praying? Matthew chapter 17, that they may be one. So when your prayer life begins to get in order, hello somebody, and you begin to be single, your eye is single, the whole body is full of life. So when you begin to shift your prayer life from that of yourself to the kingdom, because the kingdom is not about you. It's about, it's about you being transformed, but it's about the kingdom being established and advanced. So when you begin to pray, amen, and change your prayer life into that of the kingdom, now you're seated with Christ in heavenly places. And your prayer will begin to shift. You begin to say, my God, I am not one with the Father, but I'm getting there. And you begin to pray and agree with the prayer that Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, where you begin to pray and say, God, make me one. As you and Jesus are one. Help us to be one. And then your cry begins to extend from yourself because you see that the kingdom is not being manifested in the earth. And then you begin to pray for the kingdom and you begin to pray over your brothers and sisters that they are one. Y'all okay? Jesus is at the right hand of the Father and he's praying in John chapter 17 that they may be one, Father, as you and I are one. The scripture is clear. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And no man can come to the Father but through him. So God has already gave us a model or a replica of what heaven looks like and what he wants in the earth. He wants the Godhead that's in heaven to be the Godhead and the earth. And it's the church's responsibility to begin to model that in the earth. And because we haven't modeled that, the kingdom hasn't advanced. And because the kingdom hasn't advanced, darkness has excelled. And because darkness has excelled, we're seeing the people of God fail over and over and over again. Why? Because he's already created what it looks like. In Psalms 23, it says, he leads me in the paths of righteousness for what? For his name's sake. He's already pathed it out. You and I just need to follow. Amen. Because the steps of a righteous man are what? Are what? Are ordered by him. So he's already ordered our steps. It's called the way of righteousness. It's like blind, blind Bartimaeus was in the highway begging. But when God healed him, when Jesus healed him, the Bible said he followed Jesus in the way. Which way? The way of righteousness. His walk changed. His speech changed. His eyes were open. He began to see. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know if they're ready for this, Lord. 
want to go to Exodus chapter 30, but before we go there, I'm going to speak on Matthew chapter 28. Thank you, sir. I don't know if you guys got the air conditioning on, but it is hot up here. My wife says you're having a personal summer. And she got that from Apostle Cal. We call this the Great Commission. And I'm going to link Matthew 28 to Ephesians chapter 4. When he ascended up on high, he led what? What did he do? And he gave gifts unto men. Let's read Matthew chapter 28. He says this, go ye therefore and teach. That word teach is disciple all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Say Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The word baptism, you know what it means? It means to be fully immersed. Can I tell you something? He's not talking about water baptism here. He's not talking about water baptism here. He's talking about a spiritual principle that we must learn. And he's not talking to everybody. You know who he's talking to? He's talking to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. And he gave apostles and prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. You know what the responsibility is? The responsibility is the leadership of the church. He's given them, he's endowed them with the grace to baptize, hallelujah, and to disciple in the name of the Father Son and Holy Spirit. Why? Because that was the God's very intention from the very beginning. You know what Adam was baptized in? The Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. He was one with the Father. He was one with the Spirit. He was one with, amen, the Son. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? And so now today what God is doing is he's raising up a company of men and women that will learn how to disciple and will learn how to raise up a generation that will be one with the Father. Because the priority of the Father is to establish the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost in the earth. And that comes through the way of discipleship. Can I tell you something? Discipleship is the process of sonship. It's the process of maturation. It's the process of development. It's the process that you go through when you mature. Like Matt, like Jesus said, the parable of the seed. 30, 60, and 100 folds. The seed was the incorruptible word that gets planted in your heart. And it begins to grow, multiply, and prevail. It begins to grow 30, 60, and 100 fold because it's God's purpose that you would learn how to be one with him. Oh, I'm getting to a corporate oneness. I'm laying a foundation of what it means to be one. This is, this is what God was showing me. You might have a different presentation of it, but I'm just telling you what the Lord was speaking to me about being one. I cannot be one when I have the flesh ruling and reigning in my life. I cannot be one with him when my mind hasn't been renewed to get the mind of Christ. I cannot be one with him when I'm thinking contrary to the kingdom of God and violating scripture, amen, by mistreating my wife or my friends or the ministry relationships that I have. Because you know what happens? Righteousness says you can't do that, Andrew. You can't do that. You can't treat people like that anymore. You can't act like that anymore. You've been brought into the image. Hallelujah. If you want to come into oneness, you've got to come to a place called transformation. He said, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And watch this, teaching them to observe all the things whatsoever I commanded you. And he says, and lo, I'm with you even to the end of the world. Amen. Amen. And God is awakening leaders today to have this understanding of their responsibility 
of who they are and why they are. He's getting rid of the selfishness, amen, of me, myself, and I. And he's putting in another trio called the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. We often quote Psalms 133, and I just have these scriptures marked. I don't have notes. I don't have any notes. I just have my Bible app here. This is all out of my meditation and just my prayer and asking the Lord what he wants to do because I believe there's a great shift taking place in the church today. A shift from a church that represents herself to a church that's going to represent the kingdom. Because see, in the kingdom of God, you cannot violate the principles of the kingdom. In the kingdom of God, you can't act the way you do. You, you've, you've been acting, amen? Gossip and, and tailbearing and mistreating people and backbiting and stealing and doing all this crazy stuff, amen? Embezzling money, doing whatever it is, hallelujah. It's time that righteousness begins to work in the church today. The Bible says judgment starts in the house of God. It, and we, it's not, he's not talking about a church. He's talking about you. You are the house of God. And you know what righteousness is? It's his judgment that begins to judge <laughs> what's not one with him. And it brings you into proper order and it deals with you. And then the Holy Ghost, when you, when you have relationship with the Holy Ghost, he begins to bring correction and he begins to make those adjustments. And he begins, he's your advocate. He's your helper. He's the spirit of truth. The spirit of grace been given to help you walk this life out. And we don't pray in the Holy Ghost like we should. This whole time I was sitting down praying in the Holy Ghost, Apostle Barry, because I, I don't want to miss it. I don't want to say something I shouldn't be saying. I want to be a voice to speak. Now, let me let's go to Exodus chapter. Oh, no, no, no. Let, let's stay here in Psalms 133. Watch this, because we talk about unity. Amen. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in what? You want to know what that word dwell means? When you search it out, it also means it means to dwell, to live, to be in a place, to abide. But it also means marriage. You want to know what true unity looks like? It looks like covenant relationship. We get the word community from the word unity. And until we realize that God cut a relationship, a covenant with us, that we now have a covenant relationship with him, it's the same relationship covenant-wise with God that we have with each other. So guess what? We have to learn how to work with each other and how to be the word commitment. <laughs> you know what Jesus said? He said, will I find faith? Will there be a faithful people that understand covenant. Because covenant means that I'm connected to you. And yeah, we might have some disagreements, Apostle Eddie. We might not agree upon everything. But because I'm covenantly connected to you, I've made a commitment. And that commitment means that I, I'm going to learn how to die to self. To what I want. Not my will, but your will be done, Father. And covenant brings out the understanding of commitment and relationship. So if we're going to talk about unity, let's first talk about us being one as far as co commitment that God has brought us into. It's called the family of God. Right? Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment, the precious oil upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, and went down to the skirts. Man, I, the Holy Ghost has me in thoughts ahead, and I'm trying, to, I'm trying to keep up with it. Jesus. As the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. Say Zion. 
We're talking about the ecclesia. Come on, somebody. That the oil is falling down upon the ecclesia from the head. Amen. Down to the beard, down to the skirts of the body, that it covers the whole entire body. We're going to talk about the oil in just a minute. But watch this in verse 3. As the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing forevermore. There is a blessing, Eddie, Apostle Eddie, that we haven't tapped into because there's no oil flowing. Come on, somebody. On the true ecclesia, but the day is coming, hallelujah, that I'm prophesying even now that there's a church that's rising up. The true ecclesia, the true anointing oil that God is pouring upon the head of the church that's going to release a blessing, hallelujah, one that you and I have not seen yet. But it's coming. And for all those who have spoken against love and unity and what God is doing in this movement, I'm going to prove to you by this holy scriptures that what God is doing in Exodus chapter 30 is exactly what God is doing in love and unity. In Exodus chapter 30, God tells Moses to make two distinct items. First, the oil, and then the incense. Can I tell you something? There's a reason why God said to make the holy anointing oil. This was the oil in Psalms 133 that ran upon the head of Aaron. I'm going to say something else that's going to stir your spirit. Isaiah chapter... Uh, Six verses seven and eight, or nine, seven and eight, says, For unto us a child is born, for unto us a son is given. And what does it say? The government shall what? What God is doing in this hour is He's raising up a church that's going to learn how to shoulder the government once again. Because he wants the anointing oil to flow from the head down to the skirt. But because the church is caught up in apostles don't exist anymore. There were only 12. And prophets don't exist anymore. They don't, they don't exist anymore. God is getting rid of that nonsense. He's bringing an understanding and a revelation of how important it is for the oil to flow upon the head all the way down to the skirts of the church. The church is learning how to shoulder the government once again. God is a God of order. And the way He does it is He does it through headship. If there's going to be a change that's going to come forth, it's going to have to be through leaders who have learned how to get rid of their life to get rid of, to get His. We're in Exodus chapter 30. We're going to read in verse 22. You all ready? As I was meditating, this is the first time I've ever taught this. And as I was meditating here, I want to bring this out because this is, this is, this is incredible. Because this oil is so powerful. My God. Verse 22, it says, Moreover, the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Watch this. Take also unto the principal spices. Somebody say principal. You know what the word principal means? <laughs> yes, it means first. It means headship. It, but it also it means quality. There were four spices and oil that made the holy anointing oil. Now watch this. The first thing he says is he says, Moses, make sure you gather principle, quality, quality, quality spices. 
Not spices that are wilted. Amen. Hallelujah. Not spices that are that are not developed or fully mature. Are you listening to what I'm saying? He says, I want you to get principal spices. First one, pure myrrh. Second one, sweet cinnamon. Third one, sweet calamus. The fourth one, cassia. And then the fifth element was the olive oil. Ooh, Jesus. When we talk about principal spices, God is not looking for leaders that are not quality. He can't, he can't work with those who refuse to change their character. And refuse to live for him by living for themselves. Building their own ministries. Building what they think God wants. I remember we were teaching about glory. Glory, when you look up the word glory, it means opinion. But it's God's opinion of you. See, we have an opinion of what God wants. And but wait a minute, we got to get his opinion. We got to get his glory and what he thinks. Hallelujah. And what he wants. We're too caught up in our ministry and trying to look good and trying to satisfy ourselves rather than learning how to satisfy him and what he wants. And you know why? Because sometimes, hallelujah, when we want to satisfy or fulfill what he wants, it's the death of you. It's the end of you. We don't want to die. We don't want to end ourselves. Hallelujah. Yes, the end of you. Principal spices. Now watch this. The first one. Pure myrrh. Pure myrrh. Say pure myrrh. First it's got to be quality. Now it's got to be pure myrrh. You know what myrrh speaks of? Myrrh speaks of the apostle. Oh Lord, help me here. Myrrh was used for purification. Myrrh speaks of the apostle because this is, this is how God purifies his church by the apostolic anointing. But watch this. It says pure myrrh. You want to know what the word myrrh, pure, means? It means to ooze out. What, what does that mean? That mean Apostle Don, Apostle Gary. The word pure means to ooze out, a natural process. And when I begin to look up what pure means, you know what it means? They had, they were able to get mirror two ways. The first way was that it oozed out of the bark naturally, and it took time. And because it oozed out naturally and took time, it was very potent, Apostle Barry. It had substance. But you want to know the other way they got the myrrh? <laughs> they took the knife and they would cut the bark. And myrrh would come out. And they would get a lot of myrrh very quickly. But can I tell you something? It wasn't very potent. Hallelujah. It wasn't pure. They took a shortcut to get the myrrh. Can I tell you this? There are many that are apostles that take the shortcut rather than going through the process of becoming pure. Quality. Character. Everybody today wants to be an apostle. Why? Because they think it's a title. They think it's something glorious, but it takes time to be developed and mature and maturate. Who wants to go through death in a process when you can easily slap a title on your name called apostle? And the greatest detriment today was is Facebook and these platforms. Because today we have Facebook apostles and Instagram prophets.
haven't built anything, haven't gone through anything, haven't done anything. But God said, pure myrrh. He said, I want those that are going to be processed. I want those that are authentic. I want those that have gone through the process. Because it's not about them. It's about me. It's about my kingdom. Sweet Calamus speaks of the prophet. Because the... Sorry, sweet cinnamon... I bypassed one. Sweet cinnamon. That speaks of the prophet. Because how many of you know how sweet are the words of the father? It was the prophets of old that released the word of the Lord and what God wanted to do to restore Israel. It is no different today with the prophets today. It is sweet cinnamon. And how many know the cinnamon is a spice that you can smell and it lights you up? When you enter a house where there's cinnamon, tea, amen, you can smell that. Amen. The cinnamon speaks, speaks of the prophet and it's sweet cinnamon. And then there's sweet calamus, which speaks of, amen, the evangelist. And then there's Cassia, amen, which speaks of the pastor. I don't, I don't want to have, because I for time, I don't want to go into these, but I wanted a hit on pure myrrh, the apostle. Yeah, amen. And then there's olive oil. And, and this one really got me, because I never could understand, Apostle Michael, the scripture that says, we have need that no man teach us, that we have an unction from the Holy Ghost. So what does that mean? It means that these spices have to be blended with the oil. Because any man that speaks out of himself and not from heaven, you're being taught by man and not the Holy Ghost. See, what happened when Jesus had to have the Holy Ghost? When he was baptized, it says that there was a dove that came from heaven and filled him. And it animated the gift of the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. So watch this. We have apostolic teaching. We got prophetic teaching. We got pastoral teaching. Hello, evangel evangelistic teaching. But it has to be anointed. It has to be appointed. Come on, somebody. It's got to be by the Holy Ghost because if it's not, it's just man. That's why the scripture says that you have an unction from the Holy Ghost, that the Holy Ghost is the one that's your teacher. He teaches through the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. Now, oh Lord, hallelujah. These four spices had to be crushed first crushed in order to be blended together. But watch this, Eddie. It said principal spices. First, you've got to have the character to represent. And you know what's happening in love and unity? Let me, let me, for those of you who don't understand, let me open up the eyes of your understanding so that you can prophetically see what's happening today. We have seasoned men, God, the 12, amen, senior council that have been through hell and back. Can I just say it? They've been processed. They've been tried in the fire. Their, their, their character has been developed. So what God did is he chose, amen, four principal quality spices, and he brought them all together. And you know what happens next? They have to be crushed. And this is what's happening today because there's a corporate anointing of a oneness that God is bringing back in the church today. So what he does is he takes character, brings it all together, and then he crushes it. So they're all together. Hallelujah. Oh, my God, my God, my God, my God. He crushes it so that it's all now working together. Hallelujah. Let me give you an example. There, Goliath is over Israel, and I have a little bit of time left. Goliath is over Israel, and he's taunting all of Israel for 40 days. Say 40 days. 
Because 40 is the number of generations. But was there not a son in Israel that can rise up above this Goliath? Uh, hello, somebody. He was a Philistine. Are, are you listening to what I'm saying? He was a Philistine. The word Philistine means immigrant. The word Goliath, you know what Goliath means? It means exile. It means splendor and exile. But can I tell you what's plaguing the church today is this giant called Goliath. Hello, somebody. This thing that doesn't represent the image and likeness of God. Hello, somebody. Man's philosophy, man's idea, man's teaching, man's understanding of the scripture, rather than having a Holy Ghost download, hallelujah, of what the word really is saying and teaching of the apostles' doctrine. It's a Goliath that it, it wasn't the apostles' doctrine. Can I say it like that? And what happened? That God had to raise up a teenager, amen, that went to the brook. Now watch this. Principal spices. The, the stones, the five stones were in the brook, but they were smooth stones. Whoo, somebody going to get this here in a minute. Now watch this. The journey of the stone had to start from the top of the mountain. And as it rained, as the storms came, and as the water dropped on the mountain, it pushed the stones down the mountain. And what happened is they began to collide with one another and break off the rough edges. Hallelujah. Are you listening to what I'm saying? There was a process where it had to go through, where the rough edges had to be broken off. This is what the Bible says. He said, bring principal spices, quality. The rough edges had to be broken off. And so what David did is he saw five, he saw four principal spices in the brook. Whoo! He takes all five of the smooth stones because he knew a smooth stone will hit its target when he releases it and lets it fly. Now watch this. He takes the stones and he puts them into the shepherd's bag. And in the shepherd's bag, something miraculous happens. It's called love and unity. And 12 senior council members suddenly became one. He takes out one stone and he slings it and he destroys this thing called immigration. Let's plague the church. This thing where the church has no identity and she doesn't understand who she is. You know what happened to Adam and Eve? When they failed, they were exiled out of Eden. Goliath means exile. And what the enemy wants to do is bring an ignorance to the church and keep the church in ignorance by leaders who don't understand their assignment. They haven't been crushed. Principal spices. He takes the five smooth stones. He puts them into the shepherd's bag. And what happens is that they forge and they all became one in the bag. He took out one stone, which was the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. And he slings it and he hits Goliath straight on the head. This thing, this stronghold that we're up against must be destroyed. By tearing down this stronghold of not knowing our identity as sons and who we are in the kingdom of God. He destroys Goliath. You know what he says? He says, you uncircumcised Philistine. You dog. You better hear what I'm telling you. We don't understand covenant, Apostle Eddie. We're no different than Goliath. We're no different than Goliath. I don't know about you, but I have covenant rights as a son of Almighty God. Now watch this in verse 26 all the way down to verse 28. You know what happens? The oil. The oil. 
he, God tells Moses to take the oil and anoint all the furniture. You know, the tabernacle speaks of sonship, but it speaks of the corporate anointing. And I'm going to tell you that there's no oil anointing the church in her fullness. Because he told Moses, he said, I want you to anoint the brazen altar. Amen. I want you to anoint the laver where the priests washed their hands and there was a mirror where they could see the reflection. And we were talking about reflection yesterday in discipleship class. Really, it's the reflection. We got to see his reflection. Amen so that we can understand who we are. And then he said to anoint, amen, the candelabra, with, come on, with the oil. And then after that, Aaron, I want you to anoint the table of showbread. Are you, are you listening to what I'm telling you? So in every aspect, Eddie, we're supposed to be in the church anointing with this oil every aspect of their life. The candelabra, which speaks of the Holy Ghost. Hello, somebody. The table of showbread. And Apostle Michael Fram shared something so powerful that I read uh, several years ago. He said that God showed him how he was partaking of the Lord's table uh, dishonorably. Amen. And, 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 and how that in the church today, there's, there's, there's this prejudice against women. And God's given them a mandate, amen, to help women come up into what God's called them to do. But how much do we do we partake of the Lord's table and, and we do it, amen? And there, there's many of us that haven't advanced or matured because we haven't realized that the table of showbread was anointed with oil. What is the table of showbread? It was the 12 loaves. It represented the body of Christ. And if there's ever going to be a corporate anointing of oneness, it has to be that we understand that we're connected together. He said, anoint everyone. There were six pieces of furniture that were anointed. Say six. See, six became a twisted number when Adam fell. But how many of you know that when God's original idea, six really represented image and likeness. It was a good number from the beginning. It got distorted when Adam fell. It had represented humanity, which was contrary to his divine nature. But in God's idea, six on the sixth day, he created Adam and Eve. And on the sixth day, he created them in his image and likeness. That's why there's six pieces of furniture in the tabernacle. Because it speaks of image and likeness. And God is anointing your every step. The brazen altar. Amen. We know who died on the cross and who was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. The brazen altar is uh, the, 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 the labor was the washing of the water of the word. And the Holy Ghost. Amen. Brings illumination into the holy place so that you can see your way in the kingdom. And then the table of showbread. All these items were anointed. Can I tell you something? It's time that God raises up a leadership that understands the importance of why he put us here as leaders to anoint the church, to take us to different levels of maturity and maturation and growth. There's a corporate anointing that God is releasing upon the church. Amen. A oneness. Because really it's the Father's heart to bring us back into understanding that it was Father, Son, and Holy Ghost from the very beginning. Can I give you another one? 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28. God put first the apostle, second Larry, the prophet, and thirdly, the teacher. You know what they represent? Oneness. The apostle fraught... The apostles, the father, amen, amen. The prophet is the son, hello somebody, and the teacher speaks of the Holy Ghost. And these three dynamics are bringing back a oneness to the church 
that's going to build a habitation of God through the Spirit, like Apostle Eddie read in Ephesians chapter 2. And I believe that when we see that day, we're going to see a glorious church rise and get the victory and darkness is going to be dispelled like never before. He's releasing a revelation to the church to get us back, amen, to where we need to be. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. Hallelujah. I believe in this conference, we're going to have time of ministry. I believe I have very specific instructions. He said to release this tonight. And this is my assignment. If there's any of the uh, senior council that feel that you need to come up and minister or say some things, Eddie, I'm going to pass it back to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. I think we ought to just stand and let Anthony lead us into a song of worship. Hallelujah. Because some of you got ministered to that word, and now you just need to let the anointing take over. Hallelujah. Amen. And bring that forth into you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Just worship him for a few moments.
for the anointing oil. Hallelujah. Amen. That's going to flow from your life like never before. Hallelujah. And watch the command and blessing. As I was standing here, I felt this strong that there's some of you ministers in here today that are holding unforgiveness. Someone who's hurt you. Whether if it's a congregant, another minister, a father like one, something happened. It put something inside you, and God has to get it out so He can get you going again. Because if you hold on to that thing, you'll never get to that next one. Some in here today just got disappointed because things didn't turn out the way you thought they were going to turn out. And you kind of just gave up. You're still ministering, still doing things, but you don't have that drive, or you don't have that fire, or you don't have that discipline. God wants to remove that disappointment. Hallelujah. Amen. Because it ain't over. Hallelujah. Amen. So today, by the Holy Ghost, you know. Okay. And there's a few here that have been messing around with sin. Stop it. Stop it. said I surrender and I want you to surrender it hallelujah 
So as he sings this song again, if that unforgiveness, if that disappointment, or if that sin that's been a part of your life, it's time to surrender it. Hallelujah. Amen. And give it to God because you want to leave this place free. So the next three days, glory to God, you got nothing blocking what God wants to bless you with, touch you with, anoint you with fill you with hallelujah that you'll leave this place glory to god with new fire from god in your life hallelujah so anthony play this song again and each one of us evaluate our own hearts and whatever you have to surrender to god surrender it tonight in the name of jesus Hallelujah. I surrender God. Glory to Jesus. I want to know you Yes. Let it go. say one more thing if you have messed up stop letting the devil beat you up over it thinking that it's too late for you to finish what God's called you to finish it's not too late hallelujah amen get it right with God and you'll still reach your destiny hallelujah amen you'll still fulfill what God wants you to fulfill hallelujah Somebody give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Thank him. Praise him. Love him. Hallelujah. Glorify his name. I don't know about you, but I think we're living in some serious times. Ain't no time to be playing around. Ain't no time to be mad at people and holding on to grudges and being bitter and all that nonsense. Hallelujah. It's time for our heart to be pure. Hallelujah. Amen as Andrew did so well. Didn't he do a good job tonight? Great word. Hallelujah. I tell you, if you, if you meditate on that word, that, that word will go a long ways. Hallelujah. Amen. In many directions. Hallelujah. Amen. And thank you, Andrew. Hallelujah. That was a, a great word. You could be seated just for a few moments. Hallelujah. Don't forget, tomorrow morning starts at 9 o'clock. We're going to have prayer. Then at 9.30, Dr. Baker is going to be speaking. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We have to put the timer on her, though. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Praise the Lord. In case she tries to go over 40 minutes. Hallelujah. <laughs> praise the Lord. And then, uh, praise God, after that, we'll have all the round tables set up. So there's going to be one of the senior council at each table teaching on different topics. Equipping the saints, the apostle, the prophet, hallelujah. All the different things that we have as pillars of the love and unity, hallelujah, amen. So you'll be able to get something from each table, hallelujah. So we're going to do that in half hour shifts. So a half hour, you want to go to the apostle prophet table, you go listen to the teaching on the apostle. Then the next half hour is going to be the equipping of saints. And the next half hour is going to be something else, hallelujah. And you can switch from table to table to receive some teaching. Because what, what love and unity is doing is we're trying to bring the body of Christ back to New Testament pattern. Bringing us back into alignment with a New Testament church is supposed to be up. And we got to begin to teach these things again, hallelujah. Because the church has lost them in many ways, thrown them out, don't receive them no more. And only living on partial truth. Somebody say, we need all the truth. Hallelujah. Amen. And we got to get back to New Testament pattern where Jesus is the cornerstone. Hallelujah. Amen. And we operate from that cornerstone. So there's going to be blessings on each table. Don't miss out. And don't think you already know it all because you don't. Hallelujah. Amen. Just tell somebody you don't know it all. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. So I already know that you don't know it. Hallelujah. Amen. You just think you know it. Hallelujah. You need to pop your big head. Hallelujah. Amen. You walk around like you know it all already. Praise God. And uh, and you'll be blessed. Praise God. And then in the evening, we're going to have a break at, at noontime. And then in the evening, we come back and we have, who, who's the evening teacher tomorrow? Hallelujah. Oh, no. Hallelujah. How many know Marshall McGee? Hallelujah. Amen. He always walks in and says, hi. I'm Marshall. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. And uh, and I tell you, if you have not heard this man of God teach, you are in for a treat. Hallelujah. Amen. He could teach. Glory to God. And will bring you fresh stuff from heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. And if you come, you'll be blessed tomorrow night. But right now, we're going to collect an offering. Somebody say an offering. Hallelujah. Amen. I just heard somebody say, I knew they were going to collect an offering. Hallelujah. We are, hallelujah, amen, praise God. So if you need an envelope, raise your hand. One of the ushers will give you one, praise God. If you want to make out a check, if people still make out checks, I don't know if they do, you make it out to Allen U, praise God. If you want to give towards Cash App, Zal, or PayPal, you could do that as well, hallelujah. Our goal this conference is to raise $30,000. How many believe we could raise the $30,000? pay for all the overhead and the costs and also to prepare us for the next meetings that we're going to be having hallelujah we do this all over the nation and we are debt free hallelujah amen somebody say debt free hallelujah amen god pays everything as we go and god has blessed us praise the lord to do the convergences to do the tv to do everything that we do you know sometimes half the people on our kingdom first tv don't even pay sometimes and we don't kick them out and say, oh, my God, you're not going to be on us. No, if they're preaching the word. We're going to do everything we help, can that, that do to help them to keep preaching that word. Hallelujah. Amen. Because it's not about we're not building a broadcast so we can make a bunch of money. We're building broadcast to get the kingdom message out. Hallelujah. Amen. And to advance the word out there. And uh, so we do everything we can to support our broadcasters, even at times when they cannot support it. It's because we want that word preached and that, that word taught. Hallelujah. Over and over again. So. Please help us to accomplish the vision that God's given us to accomplish with love and unity, this movement. Praise God. And uh, I'm telling you, this word, Andrew, Andrew preached and I messed me all up. Hallelujah. Amen. Of course, he does that often. Hallelujah. Amen. But uh, it, it's, a, it's a now word. It's a now word. And you got to get that. Hallelujah. Praise God. So Cash App, Zal. The, the best one for us is Zal, because PayPal charges you, Cash App charges you. All these people want to charge you all kinds of money all the time. I said, set up the Zal. You don't get charged nothing. Hallelujah. Amen. This goes right into the account. That's the best way. Hallelujah. 
Praise the Lord. PayPal charging 3% now. Hallelujah. Amen. 3.6, almost 4%. So, gee, my me. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. You imagine all the different 3% added up with everybody. So if you can't give Zal, give Zal. We still take checks. Hallelujah. If you don't know how to spell million dollars, ask Dr. Baker. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's right. Those are real bling blings on her hat. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh -huh. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. What's that back there, Alex? Oh, you can do the snapshot of the thing, too, if you need to, to give. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We want to make it as easy as possible for you to be able to give. And uh, praise God. I'm glad we have uh, uh, Anthony in the house. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, do our worship. Hallelujah. Man, this man's anointed, knows how to bring the glory in the house. And he's here with us. So he'll be ministering through the week also. And didn't our worship team do a great job today? Hallelujah. Amen. They did one. I'm so proud of them. Do you know all of them didn't know how to play instruments when they first came to church or sing? And it's taken us three years to get them there, but we never gave up on them. And they kept practicing and practicing and practicing and practicing. Hallelujah. They didn't know how to do it. The guy even playing the drum didn't know how to play the drums. He came in very young, but he had a desire to play for God. Hallelujah. Amen. And now, man, they just, they just, they're good. Hallelujah. Amen. My first drummer that ever came into one of my churches that I planted, he came in, he says, I want to play the drums, but I don't have no drum set. He says, but I got some tin cans in my backyard. Hallelujah. I said, bring them. He says, serious. I said, get a couple of sticks and bring them. Start there. And he brought the tin cans and he was our drummer playing with sticks. Hallelujah. And he made some joyful noise out of that thing. Hallelujah. <laughs> But all you got to have is a desire, right? And God will bless you. But some of you in here got that instrument ability, grace on your life, and stop sitting on it. Hallelujah. Amen. Get it moving for God. Hallelujah. How many know we need some good Holy Ghost prophetic worship in the body of Christ? Hallelujah. Amen. People that worship and bring the glory and the presence of God in. Hallelujah. If not, we go back to the prophetic CD. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, <laughs> hey, sometimes the CD gets more in alignment with the Holy Ghost than the people do. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, the worship leader says, I want to do this song. Well, you're not going to do that song. Well, then I'm not going to play. Okay, put the CD on. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, praise the Lord. <laughs> praise the Lord. Just lay hands on it. Hallelujah. Amen. Excuse me? Do you want to come in and, and ask them? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If you would like to. How sweet I am. My brother and my brother sitting right there, and he gave me that. I know it. I just thought it sounded good. You can bring your offerings up, please. Buckets are right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Who is here for the first time at a love and unity gathering? Could I could you all stand to your feet? Hallelujah. First time to a love and unity meeting. Hallelujah. Look at all those first timers. Love and unity. People here for the first time. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. After this one, we're going to Lafayette, Louisiana. Hallelujah. Amen. And doing a convergence out there. Then after that, we're going to Oklahoma. Hallelujah. Amen. And doing one in December out there. I tell you, we got we got some plans moving. We're going to take this nation back for Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Fill this nation up with the glory of God, hallelujah, from state to state. I just thinking this, could you imagine if each state began to build in their state and then they locked up with the people in the next state and the people in the next state and we all begin to lock up together and build a happy habitation of God? 
because we're all connected, the glory just starts filling up the nation. Hallelujah. Amen. Because we're connected as one. That's what's going to happen, I'm telling you. Praise God. From one state to the next, hallelujah, the body of Christ is going to get connected, and it's all going to be about his kingdom, not our own. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm going to ask Apostle Cal to come on up, and I'm going to ask him to bless the offering. Hallelujah. And bless our closing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, they said he couldn't walk no more. Look who's walking. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, for the glory of God. <laughs> He's going to be teaching, too, on Friday night. And you don't want to be missing that. Hallelujah. Amen. And this is our offering that you brought to, to further the kingdom of God. To co-sign that message that you heard from you. You know, when God speaks from the prophetic place, dimension. It's not for you to just say, oh, that was a good word. That's embarrassing. That's embarrassing. That wasn't a good word. That was a God word. Yeah, God descended into a man and loosed his voice through flesh once again since Christ left the earth. He's found men that he can do the same thing that he did with his son. And you're not given to Andrew or love and unity. You're given to God. As he's spoken to us tonight, we need to speak back to him with our generosity and our appreciation for what he said and done in his place tonight. The word that was spoke tonight will shake you out of religion right now. It will break every yoke and federal bondage that's upon your life and set you free. My Father God, Son of, the, of God, and precious Holy Spirit, my God, yes. Would you put your hand on this offering? We didn't collect it. We received it. Because it was given as these people have purposed in their heart to give. Each one of them has given. Now turn it around on them, Jesus, and surprise them. Turn it around, Master, that they'll know that you are pleased of what they've given in this offering tonight. Now, bless the gift as well as those who gave it. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. And thank you for your generosity. Thank you for watching Kingdom First TV, your station 